Hello YouTube, Hood Ninja again. Uh, I hope I don't have a weird effect on my voice, but anyway, um, uh, five seventeen two thousand eleven, one thirty eight p.m. Uh, here's another date that I'm gonna give you for uh, an increase in seismic activity. Uh, there will be another alignment and. Um, there's going to be some uh, gravitational resonance within our planet, and it's going to cause increased activity. And uh, here you go. Uh, of course, I want to bring up all the near-Earth objects that are going to be um, in or around or close to us on the date. Okay, and I'm going to give you the date now, August 17th, 2011. You can see here we have Earth, Mercury, the Sun, and Venus all lined up. And uh, our first uh, comet I want to look at is uh, Comet Honda because it's the biggest and it's going to be the closest to us. Uh, I have all this wrote down right here. You can pause and read this at any time. This is the name of the asteroid. This is the distance uh, and the diameter of it at converted to miles instead of astronomical units. And I've done that for... Uh, I think all but one, uh, the last one, which is Comet Ellen, and we already know all about that one, so I didn't even bother pulling up all that information on it. But anyway, uh, and all of it's right here. This is uh, the distances and diameters of these comets that are going to be um, in or around Earth on the same day as the alignment that is happening right here. Uh, so we got this one. And then we've got 2009 AV, and then we've got, I call it 96 PC1, and then 88 uh, TA, 2008 EK1, and then uh, I believe this is Ellen, and, but anyway, so look out for that date. Um, like I said, if you must, you can go back and uh, pause or whatever you need to do. Um, or you can just click on a link. So I'll put them all in the bottom uh, in the description box. So uh, once again, if uh, you live anywhere around, near, or on a fault line or seismic zone, uh, this is another date. Put it in your calendar, on your phone, on your wall. Put it down everywhere. Make sure everybody else knows about this um, because there are well-informed and rich I guess you could say people out there who become aware of these dates and they disappear and I'm working on that right now but anyway uh so the the they're they stay informed Every, I think everybody else should too so here's another date we've got all kinds of uh static going on around the planet earth um most of these aren't even really that big Honda's the biggest one I believe uh, other than Elenin, but it don't Elenin shouldn't have a real big effect on us at at this point in time, uh, August seventeenth. Well, it, it it will have an effect on us, but the uh, the alignment here is going to be what we really need to focus on. Uh, here you go. You need to read this too, uh, because there's been a lot of debate about. Uh, Comet YU-55 and Comet Elenin's debris tails meeting up and combining to to form a massive fleet of earthbound uh, rocks. And I kind of, I don't, I, I don't think that's true myself because I went and did a little bit of math. And it's just simple math. Earth, uh, Elenin's Earth distance on November 5th, because this is, you have to go back and look this all up and read the articles, but this is a... Uh, supposed to be a, a a big important date right here so I went and converted it uh, it's the 32.5 uh, million miles away from us on November 5th 2011 that's Ellen Comet YU 55 uh, I've got this down uh, will be closest to Earth on November 8th 2011 at 2328 UT uh, time at just 204,000 uh, miles, 204, yeah, 
uh, but it's going to be closest to the moon at November or on November 9th, uh, 2011, at 7:14 UT, at an even closer distance of 148,000 instead of 200,000. So that's very notable right there. You need to note that uh, as a later date as well. I'm looking into that. Uh, also September, the whole, the whole last week and a half of September don't look real good either. I'll have to bring a, that's going to be a separate video though. I want to go ahead and give you this date. So there you have it. You have June and now you have August, two major dates to look forward to. Um, I hope, uh, everybody really listens to me about on this because this isn't, this isn't conspiracy theory stuff. This isn't something that I'm just that I'm saying is I think is going to happen because apparently we are going to have an alignment. There are going to be umpteen, you know, objects uh, in or around us at that point in time. And it will create a gravitational resonance. I mean, it's it's there it's there in the history. We, we can refer to it and compare. So, like I said, it's, it's something that's real. It's not... Uh, like the tooth fairy, this isn't this gravitational resonance is pretty much the culprit behind, in my humble opinion, behind a lot of uh, our seismic activities here on on our planet. We just haven't really had enough uh, recorded uh, historical documentation. You know, I'm talking like thousands of years of the type of recorded documentation that we have today. You know, if if we had it like that, th things would be much different. But that's why I guess I'm here. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so there you have it. Tell everybody you know that lives uh, anywhere close to it. Uh, also wanted to bring this up. Here it is. Uh, Ellen and November 5th. The, the reason why it, I brought that up is because that's when we should start to quote unquote pass into the debris field of Elenin. Well, Elenin at this point in time on November 5th, of course it will get we will get closer and they're saying November 9th is when we should pass through the debris field and at that point in time Elenin will be much further away than uh November 5th, but I went and translated the November 5th astronomical unit measurement into miles and I got, mm, yeah, I got this. So the debris field, this is what I'm trying to get at. This is what everybody's talking about. Comet YU-55 and uh, Comet Ellen and their debris fields meeting up. Well, uh, YU-55 is an estimated 400 meter comet which is big but it's not nothing compared to what we have what other things we have floating around out there uh, especially whenever you compare 400 meters to uh, you know 140,000 miles it's really not not that much it don't seem but then again you know we don't fully we, we're still learning just put it like that everybody's still learning so anyway that's all I got. Have a good day, YouTube.